So our agenda for today, we're going to build an entire project pretty much from start to finish. And we're going to begin our presentation with the program overview just to give you a, a brief overview of where the tool buttons and toolbars are. And then we'll get right into creating a project in terms of uh, drawing walls and dimensions. And then we'll get into adding doors and windows and door openings and so on and how those tools work. We're going to get into adding a second floor, how you would do that. And then we're going to design our roof and show you some of the different roof options that you have, as well as dormers. And then we're going to create a foundation, and we'll do a full kitchen design. And we'll get into how the lighting controls work in the software and doing a lighting plan, as well as the framing and framing details. And then at the end, we're going to get into plan sets, uh, how you'd actually build or create buildable plan sets. So. At the end of our presentation, we'll have a question and answer session, but feel free to chat in at any time using that chat system, and we'll be answering questions throughout the presentation. And then at the end, we'll have a few minutes left open to wrap up with any other questions that you might have. So let's go ahead and get started with designing our project in Chief Architect. I'm just going to update my screen here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into our overview of the program interface. So we have a row of toolbars here, and when you hover your mouse cursor over a given tool, you'll notice that you get a name for the tool. They're also visual, so a door looks like a door, a window looks like a window, and uh, that helps you locate and find the tool you're looking for. Then when you click on a given tool, you get some child buttons up here on the top, and uh, those are the different options under the straight wall. So we have a straight exterior, interior, foundation, and so on. So it's very self-explanatory, easy to use. And really, that's about all you need to know about the user interface. Very straightforward. There are some additional drop-downs up top under Build, Terrain, and Library. Uh, so there are some additional tools that you can find under these drop-downs. Okay. Now I want to bring over our inspiration for today's project. So I'm using this photo that I found and uh, I'm going to recreate this design today. So this is what we're aiming for uh, as an end result. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and start to draw. I'm just going to activate our exterior wall tool and I'm simply going to start to draw in our walls. I'm going to pull that over. You'll see a temporary dimension come up. So I'm just looking at that and getting a rough idea of what I'd like in terms of the dimensions. And I would like to get essentially the shape that I'm after. So I'll just click here, come down to around 25 feet, come over about four. So just getting a rough idea of what I want for the shape of the house. Now when I come up here, you'll notice I get a blue line. Uh, that's a, a kind of a snap indicator that tells me that I'm lined up with that wall. So you can use those visual snaps. I get another one here. I get another one there so that I can precisely locate these walls as I'm designing on the fly. If we want to dimension what we have, we can click on a wall and simply move it to get the dimension we're looking for. You'll notice that that dimension's updating as I move the wall. Another way we can do it is selecting that wall is these dimension lines are selectable and you can change them. So I could type in 69 feet and hit enter and it's going to move that wall so that I get the dimension I'm looking for. Now something that I like to do, I'm just going to move our living area out of the way. I like to use our auto dimension tool. So under this ruler, our dimension tools, we have this auto dimension. So with a single click, you'll get all of our exterior auto dimensions placed down, and we can use these to dimension our project. So let's take a look how that would work. So I'm going to click on this wall, and then click on this dimension, and just type in, let's make it 28 feet. Okay. And this wall, I'm going to click on that, and let's make that, I'd like to be 12 feet. Okay. And let's call this right here. 20 feet. And I'd actually like to click on this one and make it 4 feet. There we go. 
and we'll make that 120. We'll click on this one. So I'm just going to quickly go around and type in my dimensions. That one 12 as well. Make that one 25. Whoops, 25 feet. Okay. Now things have moved a bit, so I'll go up top and hit auto dimension again so that it just cleans up my dimensions, the placement of those. I should mention that when you get these auto dimensions, the auto dimension lines that are put down are editable, selectable. You can add new ones, delete. You can also set up the program to dimension to various areas. So if you want to dimension to interior surfaces uh, for a remodel or something along the lines of a kitchen design, or you want to, you know, get opening centers, so doors and windows centers versus edges. All these things we can set up uh, as defaults in the program. So once I get all my dimensions put in, I always like to just run around, uh, take a look at all the dimensions, make sure everything is just where I'd like them to be, and everything looks fine here. And it's just taking me a minute or so to create our exterior shell. And let's take a look and examine what we've done in a 3D view. So I'm going to go up to our camera tool and select this perspective floor overview. And that's going to bring up a three-dimensional view of what we have. So we can spin around and take a look at that. We can zoom in and zoom out and have a good idea of what we're doing. And I like to design in 3D and in 2D at the same time because it gives me a visual idea of what's happening as well as a precise idea of what's happening where you look at them in 3D and in 2D at the same time. So the way we do that is go up to our window drop down and tile vertically. That's the one I prefer. We can do a shift F6 on a keyboard command. So I'll tile those. So now we can see our 3D and our 2D both at the same time. So I'm going to activate our 2D screen and just zoom in a little bit so we can see better. Now the first thing we want to do is start to add our interior partitions. And I'm going to add a partition that goes right across here. So we need to activate our wall tool for interior. And I snap to that corner and I'm just going to pull that wall right up here. Now, this wall, we might make it a fire-rated wall, uh, change it to maybe a six-inch wall or what have you. But the idea is that we're flexible in terms of the wall types that we use. We have a very handy long list of wall types that are predefined. These are standard construction. So we have uh, exterior four- and six-inch walls. We have demo walls, fire-rated walls, ICF, SIP. You know, the sky is the limit in terms of the wall types you can create. So we have predefined ones. You can click to define our wall here and get into the wall layers, add your own. So really you can customize and create just about any type of wall that you want to using this copy or a new wall tool option. And uh, once you've added a new wall to the list, it's stored there permanently so you can use it on future projects. So I'll just go ahead and stick with what we have here. I'll cancel it and cancel that as well. Now, we notice this is going to be my garage. I like to change the flooring type from uh, that wood to a concrete slab. And there's an easy way to do that. If we double click in this area, it's going to bring up our room specification. And if we tell the software that this is in fact a garage, there's going to be a few things that happen in the background. So the first thing you'll notice is we've got the proper floor for our garage. So instead of a wood floor, it's going to be a 4-inch concrete slab. And it's also going to look, when you build a basement or your foundation, that it's going to put a proper support foundation under that garage rather than putting a crawl space by default. So you can, of course, create whatever condition you want under the garage. You can frame it with wood or have a concrete slab on grade. But uh, the point is, is when you do give the program a bit of information, it's going to do some background legwork for you. So other, for instances, would be in a bathroom or a kitchen. It's going to look for GFI outlets and smoke detectors in bedrooms. 
So uh, there's some background work that's being done and automated for you. Okay, I'm going to add in some of our partitions. So I'm going to activate our 2D plan and let's get into our interior walls. And I'm going to snap to this corner and I'm going to quickly just draw in some interior partitions here. So again, I don't have to be too exact of what I'm doing. I'm just going to cut this up. Maybe we have a master bedroom, bathroom, and closet. Maybe we'll put an office over here and perhaps a laundry room over on this side uh, and a mudroom combination. And let's go ahead and add in a hall closet and perhaps a powder room over here. So quickly I've just put this floor plan together and I'll just note that you can see it kind of building as we're doing things on the fly here on our 3D view. So now that I have my walls in, I'm going to go and I want to do an auto dimension this area. So now it's going to pick up some additional information because I've got some more walls put down. So when I click on that, now it's picking up all of our interior walls. And again, we can set our defaults to pick up interior wall centers or edges. And there's lots of flexibility there in how you like it to be done. So just like we did before, I'm going to select this wall and then change the dimension. We want to clean these up. We'll make it 16 feet. This wall, let's call it 10 foot 3. And this closet area here, we'll make a good size closet. Let's call that 10 foot 6. And our office up top, call that 10 feet. And I'll select this one, and let's call that one 13 feet. And our powder room, we'll make that 4 feet. And this wall here, let's make that 9 foot 8. And we'll have a closet, so that closet, let's make it 3 feet. Okay, I'm going to click on this living area marker and let's just move that out of the way. I'm going to re-auto dimension just so it cleans up our auto dimension lines. Okay, just move that a little bit. There we go. All right, I want to just get our dimensions here set in. So we have this kind of mud room, laundry room, and let's set that in at 10 feet perhaps. 